recall when we were young, running from all things at once, without thinking twice. And I knew it would catch up, and that we would be the ones left behind. The stories I've been told, they never seem to leave my mind. This road that I am on, I gotta stay here for some time. Time has gone and I grew up. Somehow made it through without losing sight, mm -hmm. and I still wonder where you are and if you found a way out from the dark. The stories I've been told they never see. Hey guys, Noah and I are back down at the mobile home, and we are about to put quarter round in the corners of his room and this is quarter round that we already had that was in the mobile home whenever we bought it but there's nothing wrong with it it's never been painted or stained or anything like that it was just put up and we took it down and it didn't break so we're going to use it in his, the four corners of his room the wind is blowing really hard outside so y'all might hear bags rattling and stuff like that also, Noah came out, came up with a genius way to take the nails out because we didn't bring a hammer with us because we didn't think about it. So, um, I'm just going to record us probably putting up one piece of the quarter round. Then he's going to, after we get done with putting it all up, he's going to be staining his room. I'm not going to stay in here the whole time. I am going to show you bits and pieces of it with him doing that. But I don't want the camera to be in his way. And y'all know he doesn't love to be recorded. He's just being very nice to his mama. So he is um, measuring the first piece. And going to mark it. We're going to cut it with a trusty old hand saw that's rusty. It's a trusty rusty saw. And get that done. So I'll put the camera down there so y'all can see that part. That's what we said. Three feet. Do you want me to sell it or do you want to sell it? And you can go get the thing. You don't have to do that, baby. You got it. Have you ever used a hand saw? Yeah, and it's not very fun. <laughs> well, you go get the other part and I'll do this. What other part? The brand nailer. How many do you think? How many did you do? Four. Okay. I don't think it's going to go anywhere because there's going to be the floor and then the other thing. Okay. So there's the first one. And then we're going to just do the other ones and I'll show you whenever we're done. 
Okay, so all four corners are done, and he's going to, well, after he picks up all the little nails we took out, he's going to get his stain and mix it up because you have to stir stain. Never stir polyurethane, but you have to stir the stain up. So, um, because if you stir polyurethane, it'll create bubbles. But anyway, we're not doing that today. I'll probably mention it again next time, whenever we do, or whenever polyurethane is used. But anyway, he's about to start staining it, and I'll show y'all some of the first part of it. But I'm not going to show y'all the whole thing like I said. But I do have something else to talk to y'all about. Also, he did sand a little bit of this green. That's the only place that he is. But we don't want to do it too much because it'll take away too much of the detail. And he said it doesn't bother him. It'll probably just kind of go away whenever he um, stains it anyways. You want to put that up here so we can show him what it looks like. This is the color. It's called Jacobean. Jack, Jacobean. How do you say it? 2750. But that's what it's going to be. Um, for his room, but I'll show y'all once he gets it stirred and started Okay, that's what it looks like right now. It looks black But it's not black, but it's coffee colored almost right supposedly you, you going all the way to the bottom like touching the bottom of the pan or can yeah. all right. That's where all your stuff ends up being and you can put Stain on with a cloth or a brush, and he's going to use a brush that he put in set sawdust. And he's stained before because he did his desk and shelving unit in his bedroom, and it's the same color as this. That might be enough. Maybe. Just stick it here. No. Oh, you don't want me to? Because it got paint on. It's, it's not going to come off, baby. Mm -hmm. Then Put it on the can lid. Because we may use this piece of wood for something else. Here, have your brush. Alright, so he's going to get started. I'll be right back. Okay, so he just got started. And with stain, you can make it darker or lighter with the amount of coat you put on it. And what it does is it pulls out that grain of the wood. The darker colors, of course, are going to be darker. And then the lighter colors are going to be lighter. But um, he's going to put an even coat all the way on it. Let it soak in because it will soak into this raw wood. Let it soak in. And then he can decide if he wants to do another coat or not. He didn't ever do another coat on anything else that I remember. I think he only did one coat. Is that right, Noah? Or do you remember? So. Yeah, I think he just did one coat on everything else, but that big brush he shouldn't It shouldn't take him long to do all of this. This is an oil by oil blah, words oil based product I'm trying to say it properly around here. We say oil, <laughs> but it's oil based product and um So you have to have special things to clean it with whenever you are cleaning up your um brushes and your skin and you're supposed to have gloves on do you care if it gets on your skin i got gloves okay. okay i'll go grab your gloves all right so i'll come back and show y'all more later but you can kind of see what it's going to look like and like these darker spots like right there he can kind of brush them out some and it'll be a little bit lighter but like i said this raw wood will soak it in it's like a sponge almost with stain okay so i sat down a minute so i could talk to y'all about my doctor appointment today i went for my second post-op appointment which is my last one um he said everything looked good the scar looks good the incision it looks good um everything as far as he is concerned is good he said that I am released from everything, but I will probably have like muscle pain where that they cut the muscle for probably um, six or more months, six or so months, because it's all got to heal. Plus, I haven't been using those muscles very much either. So, all of that has to heal. And... He said it can take a while for that to go away, which I'm not that in that much pain. It's fine. It's just like a little ache. So 
I'm not really worried about that. He said, I am released from all of the things that I was restricted from before, but to just take it easy, to start slow, but I could get back to my normal routines um, and start lifting things and moving normally and just make sure when I lift anything to be very careful to lift with your legs, not your back, because that's the way you're supposed to do it, but I am more susceptible to a herniation than normal, I guess. Um, so it could happen again, so I have to just be really careful, but I can work my way up to lifting heavy things again. Like, I don't have any weight restriction, but I shouldn't just go try to pick up a 50 pound bag of chicken feed, you know, that kind of thing. I need to work my way up. So, um, as far as he's concerned, I'm good. I just have to be careful, which is sensible. It's what I need to do anyway. Um, I can't think of anything else. He said that uh, I don't need to come see him again unless I feel that I need to, but there's no reason that you know, he has to see me, like, after the surgery. There's no reason he has to see me again, but his door's always open if I feel that I need him for anything to do with my spine. So, I can get back to my normal stuff. I can start doing more around the mobile home. I just have to be really careful. Now, today, since he had said that, I was planning on doing some things and then I found out, like, I was going to, Noah was going to help me get everything out of the pantry laundry room area because we have all the doors for the house except the front and back door stored in there and the table saw and different things are stored in there for now just to have them out of the way. And I was going to go in there and I was going to start painting that room. Uh, but I found out that the sheetrock mud has not been sanded. So I'm not going to sand anything while Noah is staining because I really don't want to mess up his beautiful work. So I was going to do that while he was doing that. <laughs> but now I don't know what I'm going to do because there's really nothing that I can think of that I can do other than I can go through in all of these windows that have the out the inner window out I can go ahead and clean those because I had planned on doing that and I'm just gonna look around and see what I can do so I'm gonna be doing some cleaning while he's doing some staining and um, just whatever I can figure out that I'm able to do but I would have really loved to have been able to paint but that's just not gonna happen there's a beautiful blue bird on the back of my truck. I do not know if I'm going to be able to get it. I'm going to, I'm going to turn the camera off. Well, no, it'll make noise. I don't want to make noise, so I'm going to be really quiet. And I'm going to zoom out. <gasps> it flew away. Oh, it's the color of the sky. Maybe I can get it again later. The cows were all out here. And, um... Now they've gone over there. The wind's blowing a lot, too. If I see the bird again, maybe I can show y'all. It was beautiful. It was the color of the sky. What is this? I just knocked over a, 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 a square. But anyway, I'm going to get my paper towels and stuff and just start cleaning these things. I know that there's four of them off. I think. I don't know if the ones in here are off. Oh yeah, they are. So there's one, two, three, four, five, maybe six of them that are off. I don't know if my office one is still off. It should be, but I can just clean those windows. Oh, it's back. Oh, what kind of fur is that? It's beautiful. It's sitting on that fence post. Oh, it won't zoom fast enough. I don't know what kind of bird it is. No, look at that bird. I don't know. I don't know if it's a blue jay or what. It's flitting around different than a blue jay would. I don't think they fly that way. I could be wrong. I don't know, but that is a different color blue than I've ever seen of a bird. 
It's got orange on its chest. So, y'all tell me, do y'all know what kind of bird that is? And let's go in here and see how far he's gotten. He's gotten halfway of that wall. Look at that, it's so pretty. Do you see the two colors together? And the baseboards and the crown molding and the middle board is gonna be that color too. That's what Noah says anyways. So, uh, let me get to doing this stuff. And he does have his mask. Um, because he's in there. Plus the window's open. Um, so I'm going to get my cleaning stuff and I'm going to start cleaning in here first. I've got to figure out how to get all that paint splotches off because whenever they sprayed, I may not be able to clean this really good, but I'm going to try my best. But whenever they sprayed, it got paint all over it. But they didn't know it was doing that. That was the first time they had used it. But I'll see what I can do. Maybe the, the, the cleaner will get it off. But we'll see. I'll be back. dirty that's on this window is outside and I'm gonna have to bring like a razor knife to, oh that was a terrible noise to get this paint off so um next time I come down I'll probably bring that or I'll end up with a polka dotted w window but or something that will get paint off I'll figure that out but that's as good as I can get that one for now and these paper towels are not that great for this
the magic places in the world I've been to. This is where my heart is. Oh, you know it's true. No matter where I go, I'm coming home to you. Okay, so a lot of the stuff is on the outside. And they will be cleaned again before we ever move in. Before we ever put the other uh, window back on, those windows will be cleaned again. I was just trying to get some of the dust off because they were getting really, really bad. And the more this there, the worse it gets. But as you can see, all of that is from outside. And I think they need reglazed too on the outside. So they are a lot better. And I went ahead and did all of them that could be done. And so that makes three, six, six windows. This one's really bad on the outside. But that's okay it's just the outside and all of this stuff we're going to take out and replace it and we're going to paint it white in there because a lot of it's fallen out in here even though we had covered the windows there are spots especially in this one over here where that the spray got on the window from the overspray from the ceiling but that's okay and the, probably the walls too but that's okay um that that happened. I'm trying to decide if I want to do the pantry laundry room area in this color as well or if I just want to stick to somewhere in our bathroom. I thought about doing that whole wall that color and not any of the rest of it and the rest of it be white. I don't know yet if we're going to. And this, I think I'm just going to do white because it's so tiny as it is. But we are going to be building a shelving unit over here and a shelving unit up there to store things because it's just the toilet area. <laughs> so I'm not worried about decorating. And if I want to decorate something, I'll put a little picture beside the window or something. I don't know. I won't be putting any kind of window treatments in there or in here. As far as I know. I'm not planning on it anyway. So, I don't know what else I can do. But, let's go see how far Noah's gotten. To see, um, you know, what it looks like in there. But, I don't really know what else I can do. Hello. You see, he's got gloves on. And a mask. Oh, it's so pretty, Noah. He got to there so far. He probably needs to stop and get him something to drink. Look how pretty that is. Maybe I want this in my bedroom too. <laughs> I don't know. That is so pretty. I like it a lot. Do you like it? It doesn't matter if it's on that baby. Well, I guess it does. Because we're not going to put a window facing on it. But do you want me to get you the blue kind? Or is that, did that work fine? The shop towels. Okay. All right. So he's gotten that far. That is very pretty. That is nice. Are you going to, do you think you're going to need more than one coat from what you see so far? Okay. Well, you're going to have a lot left over then. I thought I'm making a Oh, okay. <laughs> Alright, so I'll be back at some point. Okay, so over here where the, the stove was, as you can see, there's greasy buildup. And if we're going to paint this, we have to get that off. Now, the rest of the cabinets can just be wiped down with just any old cleaner, like, you know, just... An all-purpose cleaner. I'm putting y'all back on the tripod so I can do this stuff. So I can talk to y'all and do this stuff. But it can be cleaned with anything. It won't hurt to clean it with my super clean. Y'all, we got paint on it. <laughs> He's been hanging out here at the trailer. I have another one at the house. <laughs> so anyway, um, I'm going to clean this greasy bits. I'm going to first just kind of... Well, I had shaken this up, so y'all need to know that. I'm going to spray it. <laughs> I sprayed the can lid. Anyway, I'm going to spray this with that and let it kind of sit there for a second 
or a few seconds or whatever to kind of eat away at that grease because this is, get on, oh, don't do that. It's a heavy duty degreaser. It um, dissolves grease. So, no, I'm not selling you this, but I do like it. <laughs> and um, as you can see, let's look, let's look real, oh, I wish I would have brought y'all over here closer in the beginning. You see this? You see that where it's, it's eating away at that, that grease, and where it's turning brown? I can't move y'all on the other side because of the cam the windows, but that's years of grease that was up. Okay, there was doors here. There were doors, so you know you don't usually get in that spot. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and let that sit there for another minute and let's see if it changes any more. And I'm using a shop towel because the other ones are not that great of pepper towels. And I just don't want this to get all over my hands. Let's just be honest about the whole situation. But if we're going to paint this and the, have the paint stick, we need to get all this grease off. I'm going to go ahead and wipe over here too where I haven't wiped. Part of it's coming off really easily. But some of it might need another time. See how easy that came off? Alright, I'm going to try to get over here in this spot. Okay, let me see. I don't know how I can get the camera up there. But I'll try to get the camera like above this area. Oh, you can't see it. My hand's in the way. Above this area where you can see it actually do its little work. It's magic where it starts eating away at that grease. Let me undo this camera. I can't undo it. It doesn't want to be undone. Okay, hold on. I'll be right back. Okay, so you see the grease. All right, I'm going to spray it. Oh, I'm not going to spray it very well, Emma. And you'll see it start eating away at it. No, I'm not trying to see this. I'm not. But I'm just telling you. It works and I do have other degreaser but this is the one I always go to since I found out about it because it works so I'm just going to spray all of this area really good and I'm spraying a thick amount because of you know why am I not showing y'all I don't know I guess because I was trying to show you the other I'm not gonna go like past there I don't think I have to I think it's okay otherwise but you see it's just like eating away at the grease and all the yuck I don't think I went far enough up there put a little more on there <laughs> put a little bit more on that one too I've got plenty let's just spray it all down I don't have to worry about that sheetrock because it's new but see how it's just eating away at it all right i gotta go get me some more paper towel and i'm gonna wipe that down so let me put y'all back on the tripod oh it was easy to get y'all to sit up there y'all didn't want to get off but you wanted to sit there <laughs> all right i'll be right back okay so now i do recommend if you were using well i'm not picking that up because it's on the floor now I could have used it some more, but oh, look at that. It's going down. I've sprayed so much. Um, I do recommend having well-ventilated area for this because it is strong. Okay. I am in a well-ventilated area and still got choked up because I got too close to it. I'm okay. But anyways... All that look. All those years of, you know, cooking. And it just happens from cooking. Now, up here was the um, vent hood, which we do have one to put back. So there shouldn't be much there, but I'm still going to wipe it down. Let me get over here. But 
But if we get all this grease off, I don't know, this over here looks like it's going to have to be refaced because I don't know if that's water damage or what from like years of washing dishes or whatever. I don't know. I have to talk to Jeff about it. It may be fine once we um get it painted. I don't know. But it's good to get the grease off before you paint. Because if you don't, now see this right here is just sheet rock. If you don't get the grease off, your paint will stick. I'm going to spray a little bit of this and just kind of rub around up under there. Somebody painted it a little bit. It doesn't matter. We're painting it anyway. And we are going to clean the inside too, but that can we can just wipe that with anything. You can wipe that with vinegar water, and it'd be fine. But this right here, and the, on the sides over here, that's sheetrock with wallpaper on it. So anyway, I wanted to show y'all that. Not because I'm trying to sell you super clean or anything like that. But just because I really like it and it works. And if you need a heavy duty degreaser, that's the one I'd recommend. <laughs> that's the one I use. I don't know if they sell it on Amazon or not, but I could put it in my Amazon storefront if you guys want me to. <laughs> but anyway, now I want to wipe this out because I see it so dusty and I can reach it. I can't reach the top one. That makes such a difference. And it's still not cleaned. I'm going to clean it, clean it. But wiping it out makes a huge difference. Okay, so this is what it looks like now. It is a very pretty, I think. So got to get away from that window so you can see it better. And he's just got that piece sitting there with the, um, that's for the access panel. So that's what the walls are going to look like. Well, that's what they look like so far. Okay, guys, Noah and I are back home. And this is the last one of the freezer meals, so I thought I would show y'all how that I put it in the oven. I've got the oven preheating, and all I do is take the plastic wrap off. I've had this in the refrigerator for a couple of days um, to thaw out because um, it takes less time if it's thawed. And then I take the top foil off and I try to be as careful as I can with this top foil because I can save it. So I'm going to do this. There's nothing on this because it was covered by the plastic wrap and it had the other under it. So all I, oh, I try not to do that, but I can still save it. Um, all I do is I fold it up real good. And then I stick it in the freezer. Just like that and then I can grab it and use it to cover up something or whatever. Okay, so this is the first bit of foil that I put on here and I'm just going, I don't normally take this off, but I'm going to take it off to show you 
what this looks like after it has frozen, um, you know, been in the freezer and been in the refrigerator for a couple days to thaw. It's still kind of frozen, but see, that's my chicken bacon ranch. And I did spray the top of the foil so my cheese wouldn't stick, but somehow it's still sticking, isn't it? But anyway, that's the chicken bacon ranch. Oh my goodness, it already smells good. So I'm gonna put it in the oven for probably about 30 to 45 minutes until it is completely hot in the middle. And sometimes I do use a meat thermometer to check to make sure it's 165 because chicken is supposed to be 165. But yeah, you don't have to do that. But I also put it on one of these trays whenever I'm using one of these types of pans so that it's not all wobbly when I take it out. Right now it's easy to handle, but whenever it gets hot, it won't be easy. So I put it on a pan. Now I have made my um, freezer meals in my glass. Let me go ahead and put it in the oven. Oh dear, I forgot that was in there. Um, <laughs> whoops. Okay. I'm glad I had that. I'm going to go ahead and put this in there now. Uh, and I'm going to take that one out as well. I'll have to put some oil on those. But anyway, let me, let me get the camera turned around so you can see me. Anyway, um, sometimes I do put my freezer meals in the freezer in my 9x13 glass dishes. But when I do it that way... When I put it in the oven, I don't turn the oven on until I put the food in because of the glass. Now, you're supposed to be able to put Pyrex in when it's hot, but I just don't because my brain says no. <laughs> so I put it in there with it cold. I do like doing the aluminum pans, though, because I can preheat my oven. <laughs> but... I'll show you what this looks like once it's done, even though I know I didn't show you how to cook it today. I showed you back in January. But this is the last one of the freezer meals that wouldn't be a lunch. I mean, we could eat the burritos or the pizza, uh, bagel pizzas for supper, but we don't normally. <laughs> Those are usually a lunch. But I'll show you what this looks like when it comes out of the oven, and that'll be the last thing I show you or do today. Uh, we didn't do anything else down at the trailer. Noah's room is looking <laughs> fabulous, y'all. I was so scared about the dark colors, but it is so pretty. <laughs> I'm really liking it, and he is too. So that's all that matters, right? So I'll be back. Okay, so it's been a while, and I'm going to go ahead and take this out back. I've already showered and everything. And I did take the um, foil off a little bit earlier. Like, not completely off, but partially off. So, I'm going to show you how this looks. Now, I'm not going to do a taste test because I know how it tastes. Oh, dear. Well, let me get a spoon, you know. work when it comes to cheese but it's better than it could have been all right so I got some of the cheese off all right so let's see if this is done I'm wondering if it's hot enough in the center supposed to be. My kitchen is totally discombobulated. Okay. I told you that I sometimes check the temperature. Sometimes I don't. But I know it's not like meat. But you still want it to be a certain temperature. It's 
like 135 so far. 136. I'm not touching the bottom either. What temperature does meat supposed to be? See, it's hotter there. It's 140. Oh, still going up. Wonder why it's hotter there. Maybe I need to let it cook a little bit more because that's the center. I'm going to put it back in for just a little bit longer because I'm not quite happy with it. I think that's 160. Okay. Oh, that's a piece of chicken. That's 160. <laughs> I found a piece of chicken. Well, it go went all the way through the chicken. Oh, whoops. All right, I'm going to wash this. Um, I'm going to put it back in for just a few more minutes. Just, just to make myself feel a little bit better. Just, just for that. Okay, I did add a little bit more cheese on there because I had moved some of it. But as you can see now, it's all bubbly. So, it's done. Um, so that's the way it looks after it's cooked. But it's done. It's the right temperature and everything now. So, I'm not going to worry about it, um, you know being the wrong temperature. It was at the right temperature before, but let me get this camera up here. But I don't always check the temperature, but for some reason, sometimes whenever I do chicken, I do. But it's good. It's boiling, <laughs> bubbling, and it's going to be fine. So um, that is all I have for today. I want to thank you guys for so much for hanging out with us today at the mobile home and here at the brick home. <laughs> whatever you want to call it, our homes, and I have gotten a lot of questions for the Q&A, and I know that I'm probably going to get some more before I actually am able to sit down and answer those questions, so today is Thursday, we will be at the mobile home Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So, I might try to answer some questions. No, I think I'll just sit down on Tuesday and answer the questions and the video will come out Friday. Yeah, next Friday. Because I know that we're going to be at the mobile home and I'm not going to have time because I have freedom now. <laughs> and I'm going to be doing stuff. <laughs> I'm not going to overdo it. I'm not crazy. But I am uh, I'm excited about doing things now. So uh, I will try to get the Q&A done for next Friday's video. And like I said, I have gotten a lot of questions. I've never done a Q&A before that I can remember. So you better ask why you can because it's fixing to go away. Uh, by the time you see this, I will probably have hidden that place where I ask everybody to ask questions because by the time you see this will be the day, no, it won't be the day that um, I'm filming it. It might be the day before. I don't know. I can't keep up right now and it's too late for me to be thinking. So... Just look out next Friday for the Q&A video. So I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today, or us today. I know I've already said that. I do appreciate it. I really do appreciate all of you. I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope that you got something from it. Or some kind of, I don't know, what you would get from it other than inspiration or a laugh or three. <laughs> I don't even know. Um, but yeah, we want to eat supper, so I need to stop talking to you guys and call Noah in here. So, I'll see you next time. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you like my channel, go ahead and subscribe. Hit the bell to so be notified whenever I upload. It is completely free to do that. I know YouTube TV costs something, but doing the, like, YouTubers, things, subscribing, it does not cost anything. Memberships do, but I don't do memberships. At least not as of now, and I don't know if I ever will. 
Um, if you don't mind, leave me a comment down below. Let me know how you're doing. If you have a prayer request, you can leave that as well, and I will add you to my prayer list. If you have already asked for prayer request, don't, you know, worry about asking again. Like, what I'm saying is, ask again if you want to. Because that means other people who read the comments can see, and they will be praying for you as well. If you want to, that is. It's up to you. I don't mind if you ask repeatedly. That's what I'm trying to say. And remember, don't take any wooden nickels and be sweet.